There's basically only two teams that have managed to counter Donk, one of them being Vitality, though not consistently, and the other is Maos, who have done it quite a few times. Now, nobody is going to be able to counter Donk every time, but Maos have done it about as well as possible, especially because they don't have, you know, a Zaiwu to just straight up gunfight against Donk. So, I wanted to look at this game where Maos managed to counter Donk and Spirit, specifically the entire team, despite losing both pistols. And just scrolling past this pistol here, they had basically the perfect setup, but they they just straight up don't really land the shots the way they need to in order to actually win it and Brawlin somehow hit that shot spraying away with the USP but eventually this is going to be turned back against them including with this rotate around from Zontix all the way over to short so there's a zero percent chance that Su Shuhi can actually get anything done. So starting from the first gun round, I want to note that double palace pushes, which is what Maus is going to do here, are actually super rare, even for Maus, and for pretty good reason. But I think Maus found a tendency in the way Spirit play palace, and they actually use it a couple of times this game. I'll show you at the end of this round what I'm talking about, but you're going to notice that this isn't countering Donk. However, Donk and Spirit love to go for A hits early, and these set up Donk very specifically to get entries. So instead of letting that happen, instead of playing into what he wants, they can actually just double push into Palace here, kill Zontix, and now if we look at this from Donk's POV, he's got about 15 different angles he has to be looking at. So you just make Donk's job insanely hard, rather than trying to kill him directly. So there's a few things that go into this specifically. First off, with Zontix, he's peeking from almost the same exact position at the same time almost every round, including on defaults or A hits. And because Spirit goes for tons of A hits, a lot more than most other teams, he oftentimes goes straight into this position and lines up a molly. So Zontix is a lot easier to kill than most other players. Now to compare to that, if we look at JL, while JL sometimes jiggles back here, sometimes he peeks from the same position as Zontix, and sometimes he doesn't peek at all stays in here passive and lines up to an angle like this that's quite a bit harder to trade on and if we look at a team like Mao's, you're going to see that Mao's often send Torji here all three of these rounds by the way with an op that would counter that directly now at the same time not only does spirit go a quite often with Zontix alone in palace but they're actually pretty passive when it comes to mid control where if you look at them at 140 compared to teams like Navi or Vitality that are much more aggressive in mid and could thereby more easily punish a double palace aggression. Look, I don't want to pretend that Maos have this master plan where they know everything Spirit is doing every round because they don't. There's just, you know, Spirit has a very specific playstyle, and sometimes that has them with a few tendencies that I think teams can try to exploit even if, you know, Spirit is balanced, they can try and play against it. And in this round, they're actually just going to go for a heavy mid contest, which is just a normal play teams go for once in a while. You'll see uh, FaZe, for example, will do this with Rain moving off of A, but in this case, Maus is doing it with, with Yimfat moving off of B to try and contest in middle. And they've got a lot of great aimers, so this makes a lot of sense. Now, Torji's going to get this kill, which means Yimfat, you know, Donk's going to be peeking out for the trade, and Yimfat should kill Donk. But Donk, remember, is Donk. So <laughs> despite that, Donk still gets himself a kill. So, I mean, this was a good position to be in. This was, I like this play from Maus, but it actually ends up with them in a 3v3. And not only that, Spirit is a team that does like to play aggressive in B apartments a good amount of the time. So once Kimfat was spotted on Cat, Magix makes his way out B. Shuhi is not quite ready for that. He, he's, he knows that it's possible, but you can see he was still thinking maybe they were coming through apartments. He gets the right timing, and Magix actually absolutely win spirit this round with that 2k right there if we skip the anti-eco not only do maos lose both pistols in this game they start out down 4-1 on ct side which is not exactly what you're hoping for and torji's gonna start with this play underpass that actually a lot of teams have been going for recently and makes a lot of sense and you've got zershin along with shuhi that are going to be trying to contest in middle the most interesting part of this round is actually what happens right here with zontix because zontix does like to play fairly aggressive in palace when that smoke goes down he's willing to cross over and just take this duel and shuhi is actually going to spot him crossing back and he goes wait what's up and then he checks ramp because either you know zontix is backing up to throw the molly and they're about to pop out ramp or he's leaving and going back mid or b so he sees that and he goes oh wait hold up i can just come in the middle and hold this angle here and spirit isn't gonna blind him with any flashes but there's really no perfect flash for this spot spirit doesn't throw window flashes which blind this a little bit depending on where they land but you're gonna see he's gonna be able to dodge a couple of flashes and he's just gonna get a 2k and 
that's really honestly just kind of unlucky from Spirit that Zontix was spotted crossing. Zontix was really looking for uh, an engagement, didn't see it, but he didn't see Shuhi because of the exact timing, and that lets Shuhi get into the perfect position. And then at the end of this round, I believe Shiro and Zontix are just going to save. So one of the things I really like from Maus in this game is how well they're able to recover from rounds that go kind of sideways, because this round is going to open up very unfortunately. They go for this play from Zertion where he wants to lurk around this top mid smoke. A lot of teams, especially Spirit, have, you know, a solo mid player a lot of the time. And if you can isolate Chopper as Zertion, you're going to feel pretty happy about that. But this isn't a one-way street, right? Spirit is trying to counter them right back. And so Shiro, you know, with that nade into the mid smoke, is going to be able to spot Zertion and get himself the kill. And that leaves... Mao is in a really awkward spot. Even if they had a plan in this round, that plan has gone kind of sideways, and they're just going to go for essentially a bit of a gamble stack towards A. They're going to have Brawlin make his way up close ramp, Shuhi's going to make his way over into A as well, and Torji, who has been holding this angle for a reasonable period of time, waits for the re-smoke that Shuhi hits him with, and goes for the peak ramp, and he just has the perfect timing to take down Donk, trying to swing across right before the flashes land. And if we look at the rest of the map, Spirit was either hoping to scope out A and potentially still be able to go back B if it was stacked, or more likely, I think they were just trying to pressure A so that they could have this mid and underpass flank come in and get something done. But once that player dies, you're screwed because Shiro is now just isolated. He's just kind of screwed. So Shiro has to win this duel against Brawlin. But there's no reason to expect Brawlin is in that angle specifically. In fact, Brawlin did play off of A site at the beginning of the round. But once things went wrong, he walked all the way across the entire A site to get up to ramp and catch Shiro off guard. So when, when Brawlin gets this kill here, that kind of just shuts down the entire round. Because now he knows, hey, there's nobody else ramp which means this type of lurk, the odds of that happening go up dramatically. And not only that, but they have to get the bomb. And I love this little play here from Shuhi and Zer and Brawlin, where Brawlin's gonna bait like he's just playing the off angle of the corner. And still, you're kind of supposed to clear that corner, but I understand exactly how this happens. And then Chopper is gonna go for this timing, right? This is a smart play from Chopper. He sees the nade, tries to peek behind it, just doesn't hit the shot. And, you know, to some extent, we, we all have to admit that you want CS to be this amazing chess game, and to some extent it is, and I think Maus is a team that, that use that. However, you do also have to hit your shots, and absolutely Maus are hitting their shots right now. Now, if we think about this from Spirit's POV, Brawlin was probably playing in a site, on site, in the previous round. That's why he got aggressive in ramp. It's very weird to go from CT spawn to close up ramp. And their A hit, they do an A hit where you still smoke CT spawn. Now, I, I'm not sure if this was in the time period where that was still meta, but I know now that's not meta at all. But Spirit do still run a, a CT spawn smoke some of the time, seemingly to isolate the A player. So if you're thinking that Brawlin's been playing on site, you can try and isolate him and take him down with this exec, but on the other hand, you have Maus going back for a palace push. They're gonna try and take Zontix out if they're going for either a default or literally this exact play. And again, Donk is gonna head out first, but he's got every angle he has to clear. There's no Molly under balcony, so he has no chance for that. And not only that, they have the flash for the peek out from Shuhi, right? They don't just do it randomly. They have Brawlin drop down so they're not tr double trapped in palace. The flash for the peek from Shuhi, Brawlin's back on default, and this is basically a completely collapsed round for Spirit. And this is one of the, their kind of go-to plays. From what I can tell from Spirit, you know, when you get later on in the half into like round 9, 10, 11, Spirit love to go for this type of exec because it generally works pretty well for them. And in this case, they're getting hard countered. So if we think about the way Maus has been playing this game, they've basically done something aggressive almost every round. They've done the double palace push a couple of times. They did the top mid push. They had the round where Torji was underpass and then they were stacked in mid. And from, you know, from Spirit's POV, that was just looked like a mid stack. So they're just playing all the way back. They've got Magic's holding this passive. Chopper's just jiggling over here. Shiro's setting up a, um, a smoke. They're looking for Maus to do something aggressive. And Maus is not obliging, right? Maus is just like, no, no thanks. We're going to play. Uh, I, I really think that Maus has some of the best pacing where they make it look like they're a hyper aggressive team and you know they're going to be pushing every round, but they're not really pushing every round. They're doing it with purpose 
for good reason. But Spirit, after holding for a while, they're going to go back for the A hit that they basically haven't even been able to run this game because of the double palace push. And on the other side, you have Brawlin CT with an AUG. He's one of the only players I see using this, but it's going to be perfect because he's just going to take down Donk. So again, Donk is going to be leading out here. This is the whole point of this strat. Donk leads out. Brawlin is in a good spot. He waits for the flash, nades the smoke, and spams down Donk instantly. Somehow doesn't get two kills. That would have been... A really nice spot to get two kills. The reason this strat works for Spirit is because they follow this up by a smoke top con and Shiro comes through the stairs smoke. And what, what I want you to notice is what Shuhi does here. So Shuhi's actually in connector. He clears underpass. Okay, there's no lurker. Then they're probably going to be coming through the, the jungle smoke or they have to go through the CT smoke. Generally, the rule with A site is that if you don't have jungle or CT, it's going to be tough to hold the retake. It's not that it's impossible, but it's going to be fairly hard. So Shuhi spams through connector and he actually jumps back, goes around instead of staying in connector and trying to go through that connector smoke. On the other side, you've got Yimfat and Zershin and Shuhi off of the contact CT. He hears the contact, he peeks out and he hard clears this exact angle that Shiro is playing. So I will say again, you know, this is a strat that a, a good amount of teams are running where they have that palace player throw the connector smoke and then they, they try and get aggressive in a jungle afterwards. It's just a very effective strat. But if we look at the final round of the half, you know, Spirit are getting kind of desperate at this point. Legitimately, nothing has worked for them with any consistency. And they're just going to end up coming out through the mid smoke early. So Shiro gets taken down. And then Torji nades himself for 40 damage, but still spots everyone in mid. And actually, because of all this information that Torji gets in middle, Yimfat, who was going fairly aggressive B early, he can actually push all the way up. And he's going to end up going for a flank around flanking middle as Spirit has been kind of consistently making noise in middle and clearing out all of mid. So Maz lost Pisteron and first gun round to lead them here. And actually the beginning of this half is a bit of a disaster because in this round specifically, they want to set up for a B play. And you're going to get Shuhi out top middle early and he's going to try and stop Donk from doing one of the things Donk likes to do is he loves to be aggressive in peeking underpass from connector. He's one of the most aggressive players in terms of connector play of anyone, and he just loves that peek. So protecting Zershin, Shui nades that smoke, gets out early, and, you know, he has to use a lot of utility to do that, but he gets himself into a good spot, and he and Z him and Zershin want a double peek top connector. But unfortunately for them, it's not Donk and Connector, it's actually Shiro. And the timing just isn't right because Shiro is on the other side of Top Con, which means he's going to see Zershin shoot and Shuhi's never going to have the spot on him to actually get the trade. And unfortunately for them, at the same time, Spirit's actually going for a contest in middle. They're trying to recontest mid after the delay, and that absolutely destroys any plan Mouse had to actually win this round. And while that was happening, the B hit was coming in, they're ready to explode on B. And Magix does get left alone on B quite often. In fact, most teams are doing that a good amount of the time nowadays, but Magix just delivers, right? So not only does the mid play go wrong, but so does the B play. And this, if you're watching this game live, you're probably feeling like, oh yeah, Spirit got this in the bag. I mean, that's piss around, two gun rounds back to back, and they're stacking up quite a bit of money as well. So Miles really haven't found anything that's been working for them this half, and I think this is kind of the key round as to how the comeback works, because generally on Mirage, you live and die by your default. Either it's working or it's not, and with nothing working for them, they're just going to go straight back to a fairly quick mid default with some good utility, and they're going to try and prevent Donk from getting aggressive or Zontix from doing anything off of Cat, and then delay, you know, off a of delay, they're going to throw a top con smoke and a molly and con, so they're just going to try and get full mid control. They're going to get con control and they're going to get ladder control. And the reality is that Shuhi's just going to have to win this gunfight. This is just a gunfight. He either wins and they have a good chance at the round or he loses it. And Shuhi, right now, he's got to be the best individual IGL, right, as a rifler, um, you know, not including like the vice. But him getting that kill turns this round on its head because if he didn't get that kill donk would probably play a little more passive here towards top con but now he needs to get some information back this could be a b split or something and he goes for the clear and con but zershin wins himself a gunfight as well now that's an advantageous gunfight for zershin he's elevation change he knows that peak is probably coming but if you're going to have anybody that's fighting against donk you probably want it to be zershin he might be able to stand up against donk aim wise relatively well and in this game he does win that duel a good amount of the time then 
a lot of things happening at the same time. Shuey's going to try and figure out what is happening on B. Are they, you know, are they doing a gamble stack towards A? He wants to jiggle out and just make sure they have a B player so that they can go for the A hit fairly comfortably and they're not running into three players. He just wants to see what's up. But unfortunately for him, Shiro is on the other side and hits a nice shot. And that makes this round winnable until Brawlin gets unbelievably lucky on this play. Just unbelievably lucky. So... The, the key, though, is the mid-play worked, but the conversion is a little crazy because he looks away, looks back, just not at the right timing. It's almost like close enough. You might have even seen him on the radar, but this does end up with Maus taking a sight, flank on Shiro, takes him down, and the first gun round win for Maus in the half. So in the previous round, Maus basically just went for the same exact mid-hit again, and it ended up working out. Again, Zershin got the kill on a Dong. This time around, they're going to change things up a little bit, giving a boost to Torji to try and catch anyone that's getting aggressive in connector, and they're going to go for a delayed mid-hit. Now, in this case, what they're trying to bait is they want Zontix to come out cat, because this is something, tons of teams are doing this now, but Zontix is, is one of the most aggressive. He's going to swing straight out cat, and he's going to be happy to take this duel. Spirit's just very happy with Zontix and Donk just dueling in middle, and Donk can kind of pivot to try and help Zontix top mid as well. It's just a really good setup. Now, the problem that happens is that Shuhi's going to throw all this utility. Zontix is going to notice it. And I think in this case, Shuhi is thinking that Zontix is now going to dodge the first flash, but he doesn't. So Shuhi throws two flashes there. Zontix is going to get blinded by the first one, which means he's going to unpeak and not get blinded by the second or third flashes and get the repeak right at the exact right moment. And the spacing just isn't right here for Zershin to get traded. Shuhi's just a little bit behind because he's throwing both flashes. If he only threw one flash, he probably would be close enough to actually trade on Zershin. Instead, he's a little too far away, and that gives Zontix two straight-up 1v1s that he's actually able to win. Now, on the other hand, you have Yimfat, and I've mentioned that Donk is a very aggressive player in terms of how he plays through underpass, and he is... And Yimfat is aware of this. In fact, Maus on some rounds double through underpass. But this is going to be, again, I think Donk just isn't having the best game of his life. Because that's another one where Yimfat kind of just straight up kills Donk. Now, Yimfat's ready for it, which is fair enough. But at the same time, he probably generally should be dying to Donk in that situation. At this point, you might be thinking, Vu, you said earlier that they were down 11-9. Don't you mean 12-9? And the answer is no, I don't mean 12-9, I mean 11-9, because somehow in the 2v4, there's this massive gap where nobody's looking towards mid or cat, and what that means is Torji's actually going to get into ladder room behind Zontix, and Zontix, when he makes noise dropping down, is just going to get shot in the back from Torji, which is not going to put them in a great spot. Now, Torji actually makes his way all the way around towards Catwalk here. Again, in this case, nobody really is available to be watching that, to actually be supporting. And Shiro misses a shot. I mean, Shiro, in theory, is in position and lined up to hit that exact shot, but misses it. That leaves into a 2v2, and eventually, this is going to go the way of Mouse. So Maus have, to some extent, kind of solved the middle problem against Spirit so far, and there's no reason to change up very much of what they're doing. They throw that molly that actually lands underpass to prevent this kind of play with a player um, fighting bottom mid from that corner, and it looks like they might even be expecting an eco, because Zershin has a MAC-10 here, but they're fighting against a buy, <laughs> which is not generally what you're hoping for. But the most important part of this round is... Spirit, because they've been losing middle the way they have, when Maus make their way out middle fairly quickly, Zontix is going to decide not to swing out top middle. He's actually going to make his way back over to B. But if you look at what happens here, Yimfat hears the whole thing. So Yimfat hears him rotate the entire way around and jump onto the platform. So in this case, he just calls Brawlin over and tells Brawlin to be ready for this. And not only that, but they're going to pivot in middle. They smoked off top con, they re-smoked it, and they're going to be ready to hit up Cat as soon as this push happens. So they're just in an unbelievably amazing situation to counter this exact play. And Yimfat's going to get the initial kill. Brawlin's going to swing. Now, what I think happens here is there's a bit of a miscom because Chewie clears here and there's nobody in ladder. So what's surprising to me is that Brawlin is not at all ready for Zontix in that exact position. You would think that because Shuhi cleared Cat, 
you know, the, the player that died pushing was Magix, which is their B player. So the cat player could be anywhere. But if he's not on cat, you would kind of expect him to also be in apartments. So that would make a lot of sense. But Brolin just doesn't seem quite ready for that. Or maybe he just gets the communication a little late. And this round almost falls apart. But Shuhi does land this nice shot, and he pivots, and Zontix is really scared. Zontix doesn't realize, actually, that's the only two players there. Zertion had actually gone entirely for the lurk through window here. So if, if Zontix had realized that B apps is now closed, that there's nobody there, then most likely Maus managed to somehow lose this round, despite having basically the perfect setup. Instead, though... Zontix isn't aware of that, Shui gets the kill, and Zertion is just going to shut down the rotate entirely. So I actually didn't notice this before. I really like this play from Shui. Rather than trying to grab the bomb and plant, he's just going to try and link up with Zertion. Now, we could have actually just, like, gone this way, grabbed the bomb, and tried to link up through here, but I like the idea of either way just trying to link up in the 2v1 when you know you're spread out. And in this case, it means Zertion is going to be baiting from window, and Shui's going to find him in the back. So when I said I love Mao's pacing on CT side, this is the type of thing I'm talking about because they've been very slow and controlled through middle the majority of this half, and it's been working really well for them. But then on the final round of the game, of regulation at least, they just instantly swing out top mid. And now one of the things from Donk is that exactly at 140, he's almost always stops to take a drink of water, and Zertion knows that, right? He's done all the research, right? So he's just going to go for this peak, right? He just knows that, that Donk's not... I'm, I'm joking, okay? Uh, no, he's got the timing, man. He's ahead of the smoke. He sees the smoke landing. He's going to go for the peak. And Zertion, or and Torji rather, is just making his way straight up cat. They got the window smoke landed. Zertion's got that control. He's going to go for the peak here. Not only that, swings out. And 5v2 is, uh, well, it wasn't un unlosable for, for Spirit earlier in the half. But I think in this case, it's more or less unwinnable for Spirit on their CT side as Shiro gets taken down by Torji. So really what we saw there, you have to admit that to a decent extent, Maus hit their shots and Donk wasn't having the best game of his life. However, there's also a lot of tendencies that Spirit seems to have that you can definitely see Maus tried to exploit. I don't think they're trying to change their entire gameplay style, but they are seeing tendencies from Spirit that sometimes they can try to exploit to put Spirit in a bad situation. And if you can counter Spirit, then Donk is likely to follow.